Hello and welcome to March the 23rd, Monday, day 25. That's our fourth day online. And today we're going to be discussing the five points outline. So I know in the past you guys have done a four points outline and a two points outline. This one's a four points outline. It's one paragraph longer than the four points uh, that you've done before. The difference here is that I only want certain things. So here we go. So what's in this video? Uh, we'll be going over the following in this video. WebEx, uh, a general outline, and uh, five points assignment, and a little revision quiz review. Okay, so first, WebEx schedule. I just wanted to give you an update regarding WebEx. I'll be available for WebEx questions during office hours. By the way, my computer's right there this time. Uh, office hours. Uh, do you remember... Remember office hours? We used to do it a long time ago. My office hours are from 1.30 until 3.30 p.m. on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, so that's when we're going to do office hours through WebEx. I am going to set up a Discord for people. Well, the Discord's already set up. Um, so I'm going to set up a Discord for people who will find uh, that more helpful. Not everybody can do WebEx, but Discord is not too bad. Uh, this will be by invite only. If you want to meet using Discord, because WebEx doesn't go for you, send me an email and I will send you an invite. The best thing to do is to set up the Discord first. So, you know, download it onto your phone. It's free. Or to your laptop or to your tablet or whatever. I have Discord on all of my devices, and that's five different devices. No, six. I have it on an, on a really old iPhone, and I use that sometimes for Discord. So Discord works on loads of stuff. Uh, make sure you have an identity and you're already set up and ready to go. Um, and then I'll be, and then once you're ready, let me know, and then, you know, we'll do the invites and we'll be available to discuss. And I'll be doing Discords on uh, today, Monday. Wednesday during class, but I'll not be available this week on Friday and Monday, but uh, Monday next week, but after that we'll just do it regular times. And then uh, next week I'll be having office hours on Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's because I'm not available on Monday. So, but after that I'll be available for discount, discords every Wednesday, and fr uh, I'll be available for discords next week on Wednesday and Friday, but after that I'll be available for discords, um, every day, uh, every class time, like normal, and WebEx during office hours. And I hope that'll work. Um, that'll give us back to pretty much the same amount of face-to-face -face time as we had before, um, except this time you'll get be able to choose your hours. But I will continue to keep uh, posting videos like this. Okay, so... The first thing after that to discuss is general outline. In this paper, there are six areas that you have to outline. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. So it's, you know, exordium, narratio, advisio, confir confirmatio, reprehensio, and peratio. And today we'll be going over D, confirmatio. So uh, the five points, essay, uh, five points outline is due on Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. And then keep in mind, I'm being kind of loosey-goosey with being late right now as people are still getting adjusted to, um, you know, how this works. But, and t but I will be giving extra credit to people who turn things in on time and early. Uh, like a day early, stuff like that. Uh, what's the other thing? Oh, and um, anticipate after the... The day, the week after the revision essay has been turned in, I'll get back to being really strict about deadlines and stuff, even though I never really was strict about deadlines. But yeah, you understand. Um, so I looked carefully at the assignment due on Wednesday night. I would like you to outline five paragraphs that will appear in your confirmatio. Keep in mind, you can have more paragraphs in your confirmatio than just five. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, the five points uh, should look exactly how you have outlined in the past for those of you who've been doing it right. And you can uh, find the sample outline in, on Canvas in files. 
I do not want the following in this assignment. I do not want you to outline your introduction, narratio, divisio, reprehensio, or preratio. I only want confirmatio. So, what does that mean? Um, confirmatio means each one of your uh, confirmation paragraphs should only have one quote. Okay, so none of this, so some of you guys have been doing multiple quotes per paragraph. No, one quote, spend time analyzing that one quote. Um, now, remember I told you that, oh, well, it's a possibility. I haven't decided yet. There's a possibility that I will give extra credit for people who do a well-done split quote. Um, and the standard for a split quote is in the video posted um, in, my, in the channel. So go look up that video, and then you should, and then watch that and say, "Oh, okay, I can do a split quote." Uh, keep in mind your your one quote, and all of the quotes must come from your primary text. So Aurora or Cohen, Coates, Das, but nothing from your researched items. These are only things from your primary text. Uh, you do not need to keep using the same quotes as before. Some of you will need to change your, uh, your quotes and evidence anyways because it didn't match quite often your argument or thesis or narrative, especially stuff from Aurora. A lot of the Aurora stuff was out of focus, and so make sure that you're being very focused with that. Um, I do not want any researched items again. Uh, this section is where you focus on your primary text and how it applies to your thesis and one keyword. Remember, thesis, one keyword. And if one, and so like your personal keyword. So uh, keep in mind, you might have two keywords that are really important. So like if you're doing Aurora and you decide that you do want to do libertarianism or for whatever reason, you choose libertarianism, you're like, okay, I'm going to write about libertarianism. And one other thing from your personal story, one other word. So basically those two things, you research those two things. Now your flex and swagger from your research capacity and muscles, that comes in the next assignment, not in this one. All right. Now here's an example of a good confirmatio. Uh, one paragraph in the confirmatio. And this is one of the ones from the six point, uh, from the six part essay I'm writing. So body paragraph. Excuse me, excuse me. I had a little bit of this stuff right before the video, and so I burnt. I apologize. So body paragraph, you have to have the topic phrase and the goals, uh, just like how I wrote it here. Claim, uh, and this is just a general claim. This claim doesn't have to appear in your, um, you know, in your paper. Uh, however, it is a good way to guide your thing. So my claim here is that the sins of the American South are the sins of the entire white race in the United States. Um, context, and then after that you have to have your main quote and evidence. You know, a race is doomed and cursed forever, and every part of the white race is doomed and cursed for its sins. All right. So that is from Faulkner. The page number is the page number he said that. Now the nice thing in this outline do you see how I've got it completely filled in? That's because all I did was copy and paste that information from my double uh, double entry journal. That's it. It's You've already done a lot of the work for this. It's in your double entry journal. This is how you're going to arra arrange things. The one thing that is here that is not in the double entry journal is the interpretation. This is text that you intend to go in. So I have, according to Faulkner, the white race's sin is slavery and every other wrong that came from it. So can you see what I'm, you see what's happening here? I've got context, analysis, interpretation already built in. So after this outline is complete, there are really only two things that still have to be done. And that would be the topic sentence and the transition sentence. You don't need to outline those, um, but have a direction that you're planning on going already. Okay, now this is just one, okay? You have to do five, okay? 
And do you see how detailed mine is? It's easy to do the detail now, now that you have your double entry journal. And specifically, these are the thing, the specific areas I will be grading you on in this assignment. Goals, keywords and phrases, works cited, in-text citations, five outline paragraphs, context, analysis, and interpretation. Okay, so you've got all of those things. I will be grading you on those. Okay. And so let's go ahead and review a little bit of that quiz that quiz we had last week on Monday. So the one a question I asked that I thought was really important is we do have we have to do revision in this module and I also made a video that ties into the subject. So according to this video, how much of your paper should you anticipate rewriting? And only two people out of both classes chose uh, something that wasn't 60 to 80 uh, percent. One person chose 70, which is reasonable, and one person chose 20, which is completely not reasonable. Okay, so, um, and, and don't think of revision as just something that where you're looking at a paragraph and you're like, eh, I can throw this one out and keep this one. You don't, it's, it doesn't work like that. You're going to be rewriting every single paragraph. And then some of them, yes, you are going to discard them. Or you're saying, okay, I'm going to keep the quote, but I'm getting rid of the analysis, and I'm getting rid of the context. So all I'm doing is get, keeping the quote. And sometimes you're saying, I'm just getting rid of all of it. Or you're saying, I'm going to keep the topic sentence, and then I'm getting rid of the rest. Do you see what I'm saying? So there are uh, lots of different directions you can go, but anticipate 60 to 80% of everything you've written needs to be rewritten. Okay, so find the chunkies. chunkies. What I meant was boogers. I couldn't figure out how to spell boogers and I didn't want to look it up. It's okay, remember I told you I don't spell well. And boogers is just one of those words I never learned how to spell, I just learned how to say, because I'm a boy, and boys say dumb things. So yes, uh, find the really simple mistakes. And what is a nose-picking error according to the comic? Common distracting errors. And what I mean by those kind of errors are not just spelling and grammar errors, but really obvious crap that you know bugs, just bugs every single, you know, professor at a university. I mean, like, using the word society. That will drive pretty much every professor right up the wall. Uh, there are other ones. General phrases. I gave you a list of words to never use also before. Um, that's great. Also, uh, one second, see this book right here. See this book right in here? Not using this book or Purdue Owl to do things correctly. Those are nose-picking errors. Things that you should have gotten right, but for some reason you didn't. All right. So yeah, blow out, bl go blow your nose clear out all the nasal pebbles, and when you're done with that, get to work revising, because cleaning that up, it's only 5%. It doesn't count for much. So, peer reviewing. Uh, we are not peer reviewing this paper, but the paper you are revising has already been peer reviewed. Go back, read their notes. Uh, that will be very helpful. Okay, if they wrote crap notes, I apologize, but see what they saw. They saw. Also, read my comments. The only problem with uh, with my comments is that they're pretty sparse. Not always the most helpful. Um, you can also contact one of your friends who isn't in our class, who should be social distancing and is bored out of their mind. See if they will give your paper a look over. And then uh, listen to all the advice you can get, and then use that to fix another big chunk of your paper. And then the research part. Uh, so in the essay, uh, in the quiz, it says, what role can research play in revision? Uh, the role research plays, it's very simple. You guys got this. Everybody got this right. It's just to augment parts of the argument, argument that are underdeveloped. That's it. Your research isn't the main focus of this paper. Your research is there to just build 
around help things that are kind of weak or you're going like I have this one keyword I need something to define it make it stronger so if you're not clear on what egalitarianism is in Aurora or you're going like uh, I want to know more about Coates's, uh you know life in the streets or life in um, you know in Baltimore lookup stats that have to deal with what actually happens to African-American young men because he lists one there are more you know that would be good stuff that helps you build your underdeveloped points helps you make them stronger keep in mind the purpose of this paper is to see how well you revise not how well you uh, research okay the research is part of it the next paper much more research focused okay and the research in this paper is intended to help you like I said augment we can underdevelop parts of your paper. Don't get distracted by the research. And then research hints. In the last video I pointed out that before you start to research uh, you should already have a working thesis and a keyword. And I gave you a sample of a good working thesis and also a keyword. That's the direction I intend. Have that working thesis and that one keyword. And then Use your research to help support your revising. The other thing that is important is that you go back and read the original prompt. I will be using that prompt, prompt, you know, the Aurora prompt or the Coates prompt, as a way to guide how I am grading your revision. Keep in mind the point of the revision is to augment points in your essay that need further development. And the most important thing is to not panic. A lot of you guys are kind of panicking about the research. Don't panic about the research. Revise. Use the research to augment weak points, underdeveloped points. Okay. And I am planning on being generous with the grading. Um, my gosh, we're dealing with a really crap situation that none of you guys wanted. It's not like you can go to the writing center. It's not like you can come up to office hours. This is a really crappy time for everybody to suddenly go offline. You know, to go off, whatever, you know what I mean. So, I, you know, I apologize. I will be generous with the grading. Don't get frozen with research anxiety, okay? All right. And then, uh, so what was in this video? Uh, we went over the following in this video. WebEx, general outline, five-point assignment, and a little revision quiz review. A little bit of hints on how to do research. Good luck with this assignment. The five-point assignment is going to be easy. I don't think you should struggle with it. Most people did a fairly good job before. Some of you guys have some weird formattings. Try to clean that up. And uh, good luck. Stay clean. Um, don't get bogged down in negative stuff. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.